Something is not the gate of session, not the new session. Uh, thanks for joining. I hope we'll have a whole <coughs> hour and a half of fun and games. Um, who here doesn't understand Dutch? One, two. Good. Now we'll do this in English. Now we'll come So, um, we're going to be talking about. Now we have to start all over again. Sessions for the same training. 
that can have different teachers, one more than one teacher, where they hand out materials, so books, CDs that come with the training, but they reuse a certain book for three or four training sessions. And it's in different locations where you can look at the calendar of all the training sessions in that location in the next month, etc. Again, a very uh, meshed content structure. More like, for those of you who remember entity relationship diagrams, it's more like a data model than it is a content model. At least the way we look at it. For those who were in my presentation yesterday, um, you may have seen this little picture. This is a website for a consortium of nonprofits that work in the South. There's about 80 of them. It's thousands of articles, country information sheets, um, job openings, themes, uh, dossiers, uh, a lot of stuff that has to do with all that. Very connected, and when they came to us with the requirements of the data structure they want to represent, this is what they showed us. This, these are all the concepts and how they interrelate. If you see a web page, and I'm really sorry this is not very clear, but this is a, a country sheet for Palestine and Israel, and the information on that web page has countries, web links, articles, organizations, job openings and themes. And actually a few other elements that I didn't even have on this uh, on this little drawing of all the concepts. There's actually 27 of them and these are the main ones. So for them this is a very normal way of looking at a country sheet. Who works there? What articles are there about this country? What other websites are there about this country? Um, what topics do our members work in in those countries? Do we work on water and education or is it just uh, micro microfinancing? All this kind of stuff to them is logical. So from a customer's point of view, they say, we want a country sheet with this and this and this and this on it. And you go like, well, that's one, two, three, four, five, six different concepts with many to many relationships. And you go like, yeah, that's, that's how reality works for us. Now, uh, this is a little bit more challenging than how we're going to map this a section on categories. This is another site. <coughs> Call it the corporate site, it's an HR services company, they've got some summaries of legal text, they've got some hot items of changes that are coming up, they have some information about their services, they have offices, they have contact persons in those offices for different services, they've got some web services where you can do calculations, uh, it it's feeds into their web services portal which is for customers only to do calculations with a slightly different tag. Uh, they run events uh, on an AS400 organization software where we publish them through a web service on the website. You can subscribe to that, um, to those uh, um, events using a Joomla component that feeds the registration directly into that web service and doesn't even store it in Joomla. Now that's a broad scope of content. But it's more than the other side, it's content and some functionality and it's data that is not in the Joomla world and that you cannot bring into the Joomla world. There's no point in copying the events over and then saving the registrations locally but that, because at the same time somebody's calling up or faxing in a registration form and it's 20 seats. So you have to do this in real time. We have to feed it into the AS100 web service to get the data working. But I think since we did the integration, they sort of abandoned the S400, um, we need to now store it all locally. But imagine that that happens two or three times during the course of a one, two year engagement with a customer. You, you keep rewriting a lot of stuff in your Joomla system, which we didn't really enjoy doing. It's repetitive coding and you make errors when you copy paste the code. You're typically making a number of different um, types of content with their own front-end component, their back-end component, and you end up writing a lot of code which just pulls data, formats it, prints it out, and lets you edit it. That's repetitive. You can't reuse it because it's customized for this particular customer. And on average, it takes about two days of code, front-end, back-end together, on average, for a particular content type. From the first definition to getting it finished, and then again, of course, then it changes. So when you're dealing with complex content construction, you have to make these semantic websites, uh, you've got a number of options. One is to do projection, like, like we all do. Uh, everything is an article, and articles are in core category section, of course. It's, it's not just articles, it's also categories, which is rich content representation. The thing is that even if you do that, I think everybody who's built a semi-large or large websites has done this in Joomla, 
you end up with, um, this is a section which contains countries and this category is actually America and this is Africa. But this section is actually all the news you have and this category is the news about this division. Well, we always teach our customers about a section is a cabinet and a category is a, is a binder and an article is a page. But they still get confused. And this is this is the country cabinet, and this is the this is the news cabinet. And what's what's this? Oh, this is the division, or is this a service cabinet? Or is it a binder? Um, and do we put all the news for a division in the news binder in the uh, cabinet for the division, or do we put all the news in the news cabinet but in the division binder? Did I lose you? <laughs> well, I sure lost the customer there a couple of times. And that's what happens. They do is you go, oh yeah, that's good. Go live and a week after they call you, why do I put this article again? They're, oh, okay, thank you. And three weeks later, they call you, well, why did you tell me to put this article again? Because I'm, I'm getting confused. It's not really very clear to them. It's very artificial. You can hack down content. Don't. I mean, you can, some of you can, but no one actually really should. You can do what we did, uh, say, two years, two and a half years ago, develop a number of common. Office, come person, come contact, come my articles, come your articles, come their articles, whatever. A lot of work. It's very flexible. It's custom code. You can do whatever you want. This is on the flip side. You need to do everything you need. Look, man, no code. You're yeah, right. Or you can use a CCK extension. Have you seen a CCK extension or something that family does content relations? Exactly. You can use other ways of grouping that, but it's really somewhat artificial. Oh yeah, we fixed that. We have a plugin that allows you to go from a speaker to a session. Oh, that's great. Can I go back to the session, from the session to those speakers? Uh, yeah, we need to do the same plugin in this direction, put it there in the other direction. I've got 17 relationships around article. Should I buy a new server for, just for the plugins? No, well, we go just for, in the next version we'll have something that addresses it. So here's what we were thinking. This is fun. You sit with customers, you talk about their world. Oh, we have you know locations where we have training centers, we have teachers, and then we have these products and we have a series of courses that actually serve certifications for product training for vendors. And then you need to do exams for which these courses are preparations because you need these certifications to pass the exam. And then you have subscriptions and seats in the subscription, and sometimes the seats are limited per session. That's how they talk to you. And the first projects you do, you start like a category, I need to make a section, section, category, okay, I'm just writing down now. Okay, could you repeat the first thing? Customer, okay. Customers too? Oh, God. <laughs> can you give us a list of your customers? What do you mean? I don't know yet. Oh. <laughs> At some, somewhere along the road, you stop translating it on the fly, you start writing down what they say. And you write that down and you give it back and they go like, yep, that's it. <coughs> and you're happy. You've done a half day presentation and discussion with them. You understand their world. And you go and like, install Joomla. Hmm. Ever tried to uh, imagine, the, the, the image that comes to mind is like, you have a plate of spaghetti and you, you try to push each individual spaghetti strand out of the plate by just your pinky finger. So where do you start pushing to make sure that one of them slips out at the other end? It's like impossible. So where, how do you know where to begin with this content projection thingy? So you start messing around two days, but eh, next, you install as a new release anyway. Go back to the old release because there's a security bug in there. Go, no problem, you iterate, iterate. All the time the customer says, it's awfully quiet on their side. Why aren't they calling me and showing me stuff? Because we thought they understood us. They said, we've got this really flexible system. Now it takes them like two weeks to come up with the first version and it has articles. Now we're going to add you know, countries and subjects and topics and categories and customers and brands and products later. Yeah. It doesn't work for them. So what if we could build a structured content site in a sort of declarative style? You have something which is called a lamp or a family of products, which is a design. Okay, fine. You also have, in that family, you have multiple actual products, which have a product code and a color, or can have multiple colors. That I understand, that my customer understands. 
The webmaster understands. The production manager understands. The guy who pays my bills understands. The visitor understands. This is really important. Have you ever, who's had the situation where you talk to your customer, you try to teach them about sections and categories and articles and how you put that there and you maybe templates for filling in the HTML in an article so that they can, who, who's, who's experienced that? So the other guys who knew it to Juno? <laughs> uh, I mean, just to be clear on this, this is the same for Drupal, Type 3, anything. It has the same problems. We want to do this with minimal coding. Now we're, we're pretty technical guys. Um, give me a chance to introduce my team. Tom, the guy who writes the code, the nitty gritty stuff. Frederick, who does most of the view definition. And he's the guy who's the first guinea pig of doing projects with us. This is an AK vote, the infamous AK vote. You finally get to meet him and see him in the flesh. Um, he's not a coder. He's a bit of a coder. He's really a coder in capital C. But that doesn't mean that writing the same repetitive code is fun. Um, so we want to do minimal coding. We know um, um, sort of activists for a certain political or sociological movement, so we don't say no code, just minimal code. Very pragmatic, we need to get the job done. Right? We integrate content from any data source. Who has had a project where you could not for practical reasons, or we're not allowed to copy the data onto the Joomla database table set. Okay. Security reasons. Oh, you want to show inventory? Okay. Do you have room for like 380,000 inventory positions that are updated about 1,500 per second? Maybe we'll just do a live interface with your assistant. That'll be a little bit better. Um, and we wanted to use a toolkit. It's not a CCK extension, you won't find it in the JET, it's not a tool that is for end users, there's no documentation, actually Thomas here is the documentation. But we wanted a toolkit which was CMS agnostic. It should not be a Joomla specific thing because we have customers who don't want Joomla. We usually don't work for them, but we tell them that Joomla is a nice architectural framework to build stuff in, and that uh, we look at what's happening outside, we still believe in Joomla, but they're not stuck with Joomla if something should happen. And <coughs> there has been rumor and indications in the last two years that if something was happening, it was being really well, really well hidden, and if anything was going to happen, it would be the end of Joomla. So as an integrator whose business rests on that, I have to hedge my bets. So what you do, as I did in my, said in my presentation yesterday, you put an isolation layer. One content can be used flawlessly from in Joomla, but it can be used from PHP directly, it can be used from pretty much any system if you want. A toolkit suited for an integrator. So uh, if, if uh, Luku is Lukma, no code, this is Lukma, no user interface. We don't have clicks and drop downs and stuff. Our development strategy is not agile or scrum, it's called just in time. We build what we need. We thought about pretty much everything that we think that uh, the one content should be able to do, but we build it as we go along and we need it for a project. And it should be mildly extensible, which means it, while it should not be a framework, you should be able to put some custom code in to extend it for a particular project. Um, but that's not the, that's on the on the fringe of a project. It's not in the core. Like we typically do a one content site with between 100 and 200 lines of PHP code, <coughs> max. And we've done some without PHP code. Like the demo. Yeah. One fine morning, I woke up and I had a vision. Normally I had this drum roll, but or burning bush or something. I wrote down this vision says, everything is content and content is everything. I don't want to have to get t-shirts made, but you know, if, if you put everything here, you can't read it anymore. And uh, this is already this is a large, but even an extra large the font was too small, so I'm just put it on the slide. What do I mean by everything is content? Everything in the eyes of the customer is, is a real thing in the real world in their mind. Articles, countries, speakers, inventory items, orders, searches, users, requests, 
uh, system states everything is a conceptual semantic item which you should consider as content. Once you start looking to everything as content, you can do amazing stuff. A menu item is content. A technical item like a module is content. You could say, hey, if I am showing this product, I want to show this module. And if uh, a user logs in, I want to show stuff that is related to this user, like his articles. And the topics he has expressed an interest in. Even if it's a visitor, registered visitor, if he has said, I, I'm interested in these five topics, like in water and microfinancing, his homepage changes because he logs in. I have a user who uses content related to interest topics, and I show all the articles in that interest topic. Content is everything means if it's in your head, you can navigate in your head. I can talk about um, this Rennie's plan to start giving trainings for Axelot about Joomla. And Joomla would have three trainings, and he would do a session every three weeks, and he would do one in his home and one there. And there he would be just before the next session, which is somebody else's work. And you go from one topic to the next, and you follow the content relationship, which is what we do every day, continuously when we talk and when we think and when we reason. Content-based navigation is usually, for a complex site, the most logical way of structuring your navigation. It is, for Joomla, the most unnatural way of structuring navigation. It is a... Turn this fucking pain in the ass. Because Joomla builds a page with modules depending on the item ID. You go from an article to a country to an organization that's worked there to a job opening. Which menu item are you under now? There may not be a menu item for this particular object. So, it happens. So, what I'm saying is, if you really want to establish this, we're going to put a new layer for page composition, which loads modules not in a position by menu, but what we call a context. I'll talk about that at the end. So that's we want to have content-based views. User interface design. The user experience. If it has feathers, it has yellow, it's yellow and small, and it says quack, it's a duck. If I see a speaker as a thumbnail with a name and a short bio, and I go to something else and there's a little block with a speaker within the photo, and I go like, hey, this speaker is related to this article. This right side, right side matches associations, left hand side, hey, this is an object I recognize, I have semantic meaning, this is did you write this? The ratio should be clear. Imagine that in articles you show speakers as a thumbnail. Under topics, you show speakers as uh, sort of a, a ticker. And then somewhere else it's a bulleted list. That's very confusing for your user. You're working on a complex website, content structure website. If everything has a, a view consistency that wherever you see a session, it's rounded in blue, that would be very useful. What's a design pattern or sort of a fundamental pattern that you use if you want to encapsulate behavior and visual behavior with a concept that's called object orientation? Um, what we've done is actually making views object oriented if you want. Views are attached to a concept. The detail view for a speaker is different than the detail view for a session, it's different than the detail view for a product. And you describe that in the scope of that object. Because views are as intimately linked as you can be with the representation, hence the comprehension of your user. Which means if I change the way I represent speakers, I have to have one view for the speaker object, and all my views are automatically changed. <sighs> First orgasm. The ultimate view. I was using the time term I hate being adored by Penguin. <laughs> yeah. um, the idea is that when you build a site, you focus on the site, and then you gather the data around it. We're turning this around. Look to the cloud. Look where 
You guys are looking somewhere, I'm going to sit here and try to picture what my customer is looking at, what's in his mind. And consider that all the objects that are interrelated. And I'm going to build different ways of publishing from that content cloud, that semantic cloud, into a site, into a corporate site, into an application, maybe at the same time. I can have uh, the one that we're building soon. Um, this is a uh, user, or also the, uh, the software user organization with an international structure. There's going to be a cloud with all the sessions, all the events, all the speakers, all the trainings, and all the people who do something, all the software you can download for all of the world. But there are going to be subsites, major events in Poland, in Germany, in France. And it will be drawn from the same cloud, which means if the speaker for the session on, uh, I don't know, software introduction for dummies changes a paragraph, everywhere this article is published, it is changed. But there is only one instance. Second object. Local data, non CMS data, shared content, um, operations data, CRM data, whatever. Interested? This is part of the Axelot data scheme. Um, so you will have a flashback. This is what we used to do when we did database modeling. Yeah, sort of. But we start with talking to the customer, <coughs> listening to the customer. You know, you have teachers, but what's interested in you? These, these are parts from the documentation in the Axelot project, by the way. Just to show you that I'm not lying, which I could be lying, but I make it look like I'm not. What's a teacher? A teacher is actually something with a first name, a last name, a street address, date of birth. It's got a, he's got a URL where you can find on their personal website and a short bio and a long bio. Why do you want a short bio? I want to say this is a speaker. I want to say um, Alex Kempkins was one of the founders of the Joomla project. In the long bio, I'll say he also wrote Joomla fish and blah, blah. Short bio, I'll probably use plain text. Long bio will probably be you know, HTML with embedded video and that stuff. So we use a meta-level description. We need some description, call it uh, field item types or whatever. Attributes are individual data values, and they're not visual types. My stomach turns everyone, every time I see somebody in a CCK say, I'm going to add a field, it's a checkbox. Look up MySQL, do you support checkbox storage? No. Boolean's integers, whatever you want, checkbox. This field is a drop down. Hmm? You don't call your wife or your husband a mammal, do you? It looks like it uses a visual representation of a checkbox, but it's a Boolean value. Separate the visual, the view from the model. The model is an instance of a schema. What we call a schema is a, a meta representation, a data type. So from one of the customers, another project, we got this list. These are all the partners we have. So there's a code field, a category field, actually has a relationship with another type. There's a name, there's a department, street, there's street number, zip, location, province, phone number. Those are all, all, every row is a model. Because when we're going to sit in front of our website, we're going to ask for some data. You know, if you if you've done this with, with articles, you say, when I click on this menu, I want to retrieve a list of articles. Or a table. Here's the blog. Candidate blog is a list, a selection of models, and article view is a single model. We pretty much have the same interaction. I click on something, I get a piece of information or a list of pieces of information with linked objects, of course. Like Professor Clark, we have relations. Stuff is related to other stuff. Um, this is a little bit more semantic than, than you would normally find. Um, you have different things like categories. There is typically one central concept, like a, um, a, a new design for a lab, and a grouping of some kind, uh, like this is the new collection. That's a semantic, very lightweight grouping. This is um, all the red labs, all the cubic labs, all the table labs. That's, in, in, in mathematical terms, elements and uh, uh, collections and sub-collections. You also have 
composition relationships. You know, a, uh, an event consists of several tracks, and every track has individual sessions that you can follow, jointly or the parallel sessions. Thank you very much. A, the world consists of regions with subregions, and in subregions you find countries. And under countries you have offices. You also have what we call reflexive relationships, hierarchical relationships. This person or employee is the boss of these employees, who are the boss of these employees. All graphs. Um, I'm the father of this person who is, etc. Now I marry my granddaughter and have more kids, so yeah. <laughs> But you know what I'm talking about, right? The more complex structures than just one or two level groupings. Um, we don't have this in Joomla. What we have is other projection techniques like sections, categories, two levels, or the big improvement, infinitely nested categories. More ways of pushing spaghetti into a plate. Does anybody have a practical application of seven levels of categories? It's just advanced customer confusion. That's what CCKs all about. That's the confusion is. <coughs> you can use tags. What's a tag? A tag is a related object but with no other attributes than its name or an identity. This is a uh, this is a uh, PHP related thing. You cannot navigate to PHP and say, well, "What are you?" I'm PHP. Do you have any other attribute? I'm just a tag. I'm from Texas. Um, that's lightweight categorization. Tags are great concepts. They're typically stored as small words, very effective. The problem is, words tend to have different meanings in different languages. So Tag-based systems become very complex to manage when you have to translate them. Everybody, anybody ever done software translation? I had a translation done to French for a, a planning system, which deals with start time and end time. And that, it's all called the time in English. In French, you have the delay, that's the delay, the durée, the duration, the temps de, the démarrage. You have seven different words for the same concept. Now, software that exports every instance of time as one string is kind of difficult to translate in French. You get the same semantic complexity, like the Eskimo said, how many words for snow again? Imagine you have a tag called snow, and you want to do this in Eskimo land, wherever that is. I've never been in geography. Um, then they say, well, this has to be 17 tags. Snow 1 to snow 17. It's not really realistic. Anyway, views. For every scheme, you need at least a detailed view and a list view. Because those are the main ways you're going to show data. And you need the same thing in the admin. What's the admin? What's an admin? An admin is a, an interface by which you create, modify, update, retrieve, select, delete instances of a scheme models, which means it has the same, it has, except show me selection, show me a single instance, it has edit, update, it's typical CRUD functionality. I did not mention that this has to be behind the Joomla admin screen. It could be front end. Actually, when you do it right, you can build an entire Joomla site and nobody actually handles the back end except you who build it, which is a great idea. Controllers, the typical controller has less detail, edit, add, delete, etc. And what we do to put one component into Joomla is we build a one component which allows you to tie menu and say, when I click on this menu, I need this selection. We have a nano component, we'll talk a little about nano script in a minute, which is a module that does pretty much the same thing. We have a content plugin and we have a package for nano script. Now I'm talking Chinese. Um, when you, when you try to uh, do templating for small views, for like a detailed view of a speaker, um, you need a sort of templating language. And it's, there's no point, there was no point in our view to say, we're going to sit close to the customer's concept and represent a declarative way of representing his world, and then when we're going to show it, we're going to use PHP, because that's what something they don't understand. So for seven years now, we've been using this home-built templating library called NanoScript. It stands for a very, very small amount of visual scripting. And uh, I hope you like it. I'm going to show a bit of that. Uh, this is where I start my first demo. Um, so what I'm going to show you is 
Um, we actually wanted to redo the entire JJ and Beyond website, but then we needed to finish the beer, and we just did a few things. Uh, I'm going to show you how you take a real life concept and how you put that into what content and what you need to do to get there and by definition what you don't need to do to get there. Now, again, there is no user interface, so I won't be clicking on backend components with drop downs and IJAX effects. I'll be showing you ways of doing the description of an object using a small XML file and I hope you have eaten well and your stomach is up to it. It's a bit of technicality, but it's hopefully not too much. This is the demo site. Nothing fancy. Does it look different than standard installation? Okay, 
Go back to the speakers. How the hell do we get to the speakers there? Well, speakers. Menu. Two menus, one is hidden, which explains why you can't see it. Speakers is a one component. Um, this is our one component, HUM1, uh, which is the interface to all data, all content. And you tell that thing which of the types of content you want, which task you want. As I said, my user interface has room for improvement. Um, if you take a detailed one, you can select or enter an ID. You can sort the selection. You have some, a number of limited number of things you can do with the one component because you typically go through this directly through a menu. I'll explain why later. And that's it. You say, I want a list of speakers. Now, we're going to look under the hood to show you how you define what the speaker represents, what it looks like where you store it, how you show it, that kind of stuff. There's a system plugin that installs one, includes all the library stuff, and then we have a custom tree where you put all your metadata and your few definitions for this project. Now, one comes with a lot of uh, predefined stuff uh, that you can just reuse, but obviously your views are specific to your schemes, and while there are some reusable views, um, most of them are, are something you're going to want to build for your particular site. Um, in the uh, meta information, I have definitions of data types, if I have special data types, usually we don't really do that a lot. Schemes, and under schemes is an XML file that describes a speaker. Is that actually readable? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. So what you need to do here is you take the description that the customer gave you about what's important about the speaker, which you saw in that little bit in the document, which was our design document or analysis summary, and then you translate that into XML. A scheme has an info section, you give it a title, you maybe give it an icon that is more user friendly for the backend user. It's got an ID name, picture, description, company ID field. Talk about that in relation to you later. Name is a string, picture is a string. The ID field is the identity field, that's an integer. And here's some, some tasks you can do. And it's stored in a Nuku's data store. We use Nuku for multilingual um, applications. So you can either use the Joomla or the Nuku store. Well, that's not the framework? That's not the framework, content. that's Nuku content. You know the difference between the framework and the, 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 the Joomfish alternative? Joomfish killer. It's built up, up, up on Kuba, which is the you know prehistoric version of the framework. But this is not yeah, this is not built using using uh, Nuku framework. We'll get back to some of these parts. The most important thing is here the attributes, which is a mapping to the names of the columns in the database. Now, if the database column is called X Y seventy five, I can give it a column name and still call it uh, description here. It's so logical physical separation. If you Good. How do I show it? Well, I have a directory here called views. Here's the speaker by, uh, folder. And I have a list view. Now, this is a UL. I loop. I do some weird stuff. List items, a link. And then I show some information. This could be a piece of PHP code, but we don't like writing PHP code and stuff. We want our users to help design the model, so we separate that as much as possible. Um, I'll show you a little bit more about nanoscript syntax in a minute using a few slides. But pretty much what this does is it gets the page title. This is a way of retrieving journal specific information. It shows a component heading. It loops over the model. What, what's the model? The model is that element that, of data that you are showing, that you're building a view for. Now, for a list view, the model is an array of instances of a scheme, an array of features. So, those are objects that know about name and ID and description and bio. 
and, and birth date. They don't know about the size and color and weight because that's not an attribute of a speaker. And then for every, you do a loop, M becomes the instance you're looping over. You create a URL, you route it through Joomla to make it search engine friendly. You get the item ID because you want to stick to the same item ID for the detail links to edit because that sounds like a good approach in this case. Give it the scheme, the task is detailed, the view is detailed, because you can have different detailed views. I can have a summary detailed view, a long, a thumbnail, a mm, mm, you know, pop-up, a hover, and whatever. And I pick up the ID from the object, and that's it. And if the company ID is set, I put the company information. And that's what you get. So for pull down bar, the company ID is set, there's a relationship, and then here I can show details. Now this is not the best way of showing the company, but it'll do. Now, um, I could I could actually change that. I'm going to do this. I this one. What am I doing? What's going to happen? And the 10 points to be the margin. And a small applause, please. Well, that's how easy it is. I mean, not to get a pause, but to build that. <laughs> the detail view is similar. It's a bit more complex, and if I take out all the Joomla specific stuff, like adding something to the breadcrumb and things like that, uh, which is something you need to do because you're not always following item ID logic and navigation, navigate through content. You have to give the customer a view where you are. And if you're three relationships deep, sometimes you reset the entire breadcrumb to something which is more logical. So you build the breadcrumb as a navigation logical path, which has nothing necessarily to do with the menus you are in. You'll find that menus are Yes, again, and you, you, will, you will not want to put men, uh, modules uh, attached to menu items except for the static page, which will do with com content because why not? But the real interesting stuff, you do this differently, right? Yeah? Absolutely. You have to. I mean, if you do semantic navigation and content, you, you run against the, uh, the, the page composition concept of Joomla. It, it's not, it doesn't work well. Yeah, it's, it's the same case. The, the, the search item is the way to list you and the next hour is to get you and the way you can do it. In, uh, Don't take this off. It's really hard. If but you just want to, uh, mm -hmm. to reflect, for instance, the title of the, the page you're on with the detail view, for, for, for me, it's, for instance, it's a cold dog name. And exactly. It's, Make that thousand <laughs> 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 Or in inverse way, here we pick up a, a page title, but we also set the page title to details for speaker John. Yeah, three sessions, parentheses, and put that as a page title and as the browser title. But that's a composite piece of text that's never stored and it's just compiled at runtime. The view does the view logic. Yes, there is iteration and stuff in here, but it is to make a complex intelligent view. It doesn't do data access logic. It shouldn't actually you can, but you should. Um, here, and I'm first going to show you my attribute. I get an attribute, I get a link to my company, and I get all my events here. How do we do that? Well, The model is, in this case, me. The object representing me, a nicer version of me, serialized version of me. Um, I have a relationship as a speaker, which is the speaker events relationship. Under relation, 
This is the definition. I have two roles on either side of that link. There's two is a role. One role is the speaker, and that's the speaker's team. And there's only one of them in that relationship. And on the other side is what I call the events for each speaker. And there's a commonality as many, and that those are events. So I can build a relationship between articles and speakers, speakers and events, events and articles, categories, whatever I want. So in your database team, a person is always related to one company, but a person can relate to many events, right? Yeah, exactly. So you build a semantic relationship that you, you need to have. You have one to many, you have one to one, you have many to many, and you can imagine hierarchical relationships and, and other types of relationships that you would like to build. And depending on how you represent it, you can use a, uh, uh, these are all typical database foreign key based relationship types, so we indicate the foreign key field, which is the other size field to receiving the ID. There's nothing very fancy about this, but it's about six lines of definition, so that's not too hard. Um, and this is how I generate this company, this is by saying, in my detail, if I have a company ID, forget this, model, arrow, company, arrow, name. Take the model, take the model's company object, and take the name attribute of the company. Do you understand this? Do you think a customer can read this view and understand what you are showing? Well, they can. Here we do something else. We do set event model get related event. Actually, we could do this. Why? Because a model has a relationship with a role called events, and that's clear. And I get well the relationship which is one to many an array of models which represent events. And I can, if there's any, I can do div into each four, and I can loop over the events, and I do this. Now, let me see if this works. It is a demo. Yeah, it works. What we're doing is we're looking over the events, and I'm doing something which really breaks the encapsulation. Anybody know what encapsulation is in object-oriented? Terminology? Can anybody care to explain this to the crowd? You're not that confident, are you? Ah, oh, yeah. Nodding is okay, but standing up and doing it is something else. <laughs> Encapsulation <laughs> means that you hide the implementation um, from the interface. You know, in the process, which means I'm now doing, I'm writing a piece of a view that represents an event, which is a, a list icon with a link under it which kind of requires intimate knowledge of what the name of the attributes is that event. And this is a view for the uh, speaker object. So that's not really very well encapsulated. So we're going to do this differently. I'm going to take this code. I'm going to take a um, event view, event view, which uh, I'm going to create from scratch, live. Which is probably very silly. Everybody who's done this says, oh no, he's going to do a live demo for the first time, never tried. Idiot. I'm going to make a list item. I'm going to say, I'm going to set the URL <coughs> as URL. Item ID is good. I don't need the item ID here. I'm going to make away with that. I'm going to use this, not E, but model. Because I'm now writing a detail view style syntax for this particular model. So I'm going to use the ID, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to do a list item. And if you got your URL, title is model name, and then model name. So this is the LE detail view for a event scheme. And in my list, Detail view, I'm going to say <laughs> and 
if Murphy is busy treating Johan Janssens to a difficult time, this would really work. Uh, does it? Let me see. Oh, this is model name and this is a event. Uh, speaks for. There you go. And it works. So I'm doing object oriented view composition. Now I decide to change my my event representation with an icon and all my events and LE views that I use everywhere in my semantic view network are all changed, very consistent user experience. Third orgasm. I'm going to reach five, I want you to say Juno rocks. <laughs> Excuse me, a downer for most people I know. Um, okay. Is this fun? Good. So what do we need to do to make the company list? Model. What's the model for a company list? Selection of all companies. Very good. What's the view? When I, I, when so many things I'm saying too much like Johan Janssen stop me. Um, what's, it's a list view. So I'm going to define a menu item that says do a list of this scheme. Companies. One content, one company. <laughs> Sorry? In the other list of speakers, there are two companies. No, no just one. Sorry. Peter, two sometimes two you speak too much. And I like you, so I like this pass. Just don't do it again. Oh! Ah! I Google that. And all the speakers. <laughs> Same trick, of course. Uh, this Google Maps is pretty neat. Um, I'll come back to that later when I talk about extended functionality behaviors. Um, but uh, no, this is not a Google Map field type content confusion kit style. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's uh, a view level. Wait a minute. A Google Map is a view on an object. It just has to be a graphical view. Could I use? A reusable Google view on everything which has an address. Because that makes sense, right? If it's got an address, you can show it on the Google map. And how would you do a list view with a Google map? Anybody ever seen a list of things on a Google map? What one of is, uh, was I... This is a yes and no question, Peter. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think it takes too much resources if you have to look at the address. So maybe you could do every address stored as a coordinates in database and then you just use coordinates. And guess what we do? <laughs> exactly. Um, so this was a, 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 a sort of small demo and um, what I'd like to do now is, I don't want to take a little break, but Rene, with whom we have done a number of projects in one, I'd like Rennie to take his shot of glory and show you a real life site with uh, one and uh, show you that what we did there for a real complete, complete site isn't really that much different. Then, but before we do that, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, NanoScript just to give you a feel for the, the power of this extending uh, concept. Um, and then after that, we'll talk about some advanced concepts and some sites where we use them. And then you'll probably throw, I hopefully throw questions at me. Um, I, I wrote this, uh, when I started to do this about like, mid-2003, I wanted to build websites and I started with ASP. Not even .NET, .NET hadn't been really born yet. Um, and about, well, halfway through the first afternoon, I had to uh, use an array of objects and I spent two days of learning Visual basic stuff to understand that this was really a language for idiots, and I switched to PHP, um, which I liked. I've done some C++ and other stuff before, so it was 
you have to learn the syntax but it works well. And then since I've worked with other tools and languages, I, I, there's always kind of a separation between the view and the logic and some kind of templating that you need to do. So I looked at Smarty uh, for about five minutes and then I said this is, this is not really good. Uh, so I, I, I wrote my own. Uh, this is six and a half, seven years ago, close to seven years ago. And we use it in all projects. Uh, it's probably not the best and fancy stuff, but I'll show you some tricks this monkey can do, and I think you'll like them. This is how you use NanoScript. It's basically you instantiate NanoScript, you load a template, you inject some key value pairs, and you say execute, and out comes a string of text, and you can show, you can save, you can use it. It's an example. You've seen other examples, so this should not surprise you. It's fairly readable. It's, it's a low density of, of delimiters, which if you use PHP, yeah, embedded PHP, you've got too many you know, PHP, this, this, and that, and echoes and statements. And too much stuff for a customer to translate that to get it wrong. Yes? You mentioned like it's uh, a smart team. We've done a few projects with that. It's, it's actually really good. I just had this one better. Uh, not because I wrote it, but because, because it's just handier. Um, it's a, a tag-based language. Um, set release is 1.6. If release greater than 1.6, congratulations on recent version equals release. This is a print or an echo if you want. If else and if. Um, you can use scalar variables, depth, or an array, or an object, or expressions. It's not really PHP completely. Um, it's sort of a, it, that's why I'm saying it's an integrated level style. What it does is it translates this into a, an expression that can evaluate using PHP. It's got a bit of a parser that says, well, this is an array, this is an object that I recognize in the context. If then else, while loops, the loop construction, if the count is greater than zero, then I'm looping, and uh, This is some of the stuff we did early on. Uh, you know when you have these complex views, you, you start at the top of your screen with uh, the left column or with a piece, and then it goes on for seven or eight screens full of code. And if you want to see the structure of that page in HTML structure, you have to scroll up and down. What I wanted is something equivalent to functions and subroutines. So you write, the top of your file contains the outline of diffs and an intro tabs and a footer of my content view. And then underneath I describe the intro piece and then each individual tab and then the tabs and then the footer. Or I include that from a separate file, which breaks it up into manageable pieces. Um, you can't do this in HTML. You can do it in JavaScript. You, you describe a section. Whoops, a section that can have it, an argument, and then you call here. You call that executable piece of HTML. It's, it gets inserted there, and it gets replacement with the parameter there. But you can do this for in, in different ways. Typically, we use these sections as reusable pieces of snippets of. HTML or code or whatever that we use on a regular basis. This was before I used one content, so this was for uh, when you have one bit of views that are specific to not, you don't need that anymore. One of the stuff that's interesting here is you can define namespaces, um, where you put all the icon names in a particular include file, which you don't have to include, you just say, give me the question icon from the icon namespace, and it goes to the icon namespace file and retrieves that and inserts it there. Some of the stuff that is very useful to do is if you build views that are translated in multi language. I'm not talking about multilingual content. I'm talking about your application screens that are stuff, stuff that you need to do. Did you ever try and get a customer to translate a language file? And sometimes the text they need to translate doesn't fit into a single line in file. You want them to be able to type pieces of HTML and text and paragraphs. You can use this with sections, and depending on the language, you just include another file. Now, NanoScript is, is built for that because when it goes and looks, you do an include of a certain file, it goes and looks into a folder hierarchy. You can give it a sequence of folder hierarchies. You can say this is uh, templates, my templates, uh, Dutch, uh, and it'll, it'll start, start there, it'll go up to my templates, templates, it'll go up to my templates. We'll go to the second entry, which is generic template touch. So you can have it search a number of folders until it gets a hit, which means you can do sort of overrides. We don't do template overrides in the Joomla style. Remember, this was CMS agnostic. 
But all we would need to do to do that is that you would add the template directly from the current template to that search path, and it will go and look inside the template for the views. Uh, as far as we can see, I mean, there's hardly a performance overhead. But it actually parses the, it parses into a node structure and executes that. Um, I had built a version that actually compiles into PHP like Smarty does. It actually runs slower um, because the compilation is a, is a bigger evaluation job for the. I mean, because uh, could we have something to search for the plot? Um, well, yeah, there is an overhead, um, but it does allow you to. Hmm, the way I would say it is, it's got the same overhead like using a dynamic inheritance or object oriented. It's got a little bit of an overhead, clearly, but that is just no a small price to pay for the flexibility of structuring that. I mean, it's so easy. You send off a file with sections to a translation company, and you know, nanoscript will tell you when you get it back, they messed up the syntax, you can't load it. But there's no code in there, there's not really much they can do badly. Now the funny part is you can extend down those <coughs> packages. You know, why stick with if then else and print and echo? You can make uh, you can use uh, helper functionality. That's not the right example. Um, you can access Joomla functions. When I show you this, this is the Joomla package, and the Joomla package is an other package subclass which has which publishes functions that are in the Joomla framework, which I could use. Um, the Excel export, let me take a guess, how much time do you think it, it takes to build an Excel export? Four seconds. If you have to do an Excel export for a customer, how much time do you charge them? Uh, this uh, the scripting language is uh, compatible with other languages as well, nanoscript. 
Well, it, it, it's, it's PHP, it. but it, it, you could you could embed this in any PHP application. Yeah. No, but, but besides the PHP, you don't need other languages. No. No. But I mean, it's I mean, NanoScript oh. itself is there's a NanoScript object, there's a node object, there's a uh, package object, so you could rewrite the same concept in, in Java or C++. It would work. It's 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 yeah. going to be it's design pattern based. It's clear. It's stellar. Uh, you can make custom nodes, uh, like an Excel PDF or Tidy. You have this application where end users can type in messages, and they put smileys and HTML code in there, and they mess up the layout of your page. You can run this through Tidy when you save it, or you can just run part of the fields through Tidy as you show it. All you need to do is build, build a tag that says generate the content of this tag, run it through Tidy, and then post it. Very easy, very extendable. The fun part is you have a, a sort of content plugin. We have another content, Joomla content plugin, which allows you to put NanoScript inside an article, which allows you to include something like this, which is a one view inside an article. So your customer can edit this, and edit the part below and above, and you just put this in. Now, homepage. It's now 1-6-2010. That's fantastic. Let's change the date. I built a uh, small extension that allows Windows to update my content. I did that. Yes, admin, admin, yes, this is a demo. Okay. I'm putting script inside my article. Now, printing the date is nice. Not many applications, except for copyright in the footer. It calls on January 2nd. The website content is wrong. Copyright should say 2010. Just go to sleep. It does a lot of that. Did you see this slide? Here. If Joomla is administrator, don't forget to count the audience. What, what do you think this does? So, what do you think the effect is of this? If I would be an administrator, what would happen?
This guy's not a developer. No, I'm just a front end developer. I know, I know HTML, I know CSS, a little bit of PHP, and I know how to implement Joomla websites. But I'm not, I'm not a PHP coder. He understands the customer, and you can understand how much reviews. So he writes reviews, he finishes them off, makes them look good. Okay, this is, this is a, the data scheme for uh, the Excel website. It's a website about trainings. Here in the center there's a, a training database table. Uh, for every training, we have one or more sessions. These sessions are done by a teacher. Um, and a session is done on a location. Um, and for a session, you get, you get materials like books or CDs or whatever. Um, for training, there are also exams. And for exams, you can do certifications. Um, trainings are about a product, and trainings are done by products about a vendor, because a product is being sold by a vendor. So, this is a pretty complex data scheme that you cannot simply build inside of Joomla sections, categories, and articles. Well, let's look at the website. Um, Training. 
training models, domain services for Windows, Microsoft. Let's look at these domain services. Novell domain services for Windows. Ah, that one. That's a training, right? And now I see that the teachers were training. So in the view of the training, now automatically the, the, the teachers are shown. That's the way how you build a relation. So for someone who wants to administer the data, it's very, very easy. Um, if I want to create a new session for this training, because I'm going to do a session in Wiesbaden as well, and I can go to sessions. Uh, look for this domain services again. Two sessions, one of those and one wasn't done. And I can simply create a new session well, for training. Domain services for Windows. Would you know yeah, whatever it is. It's not in yet. Yes, not yeah. in this version. Yeah, okay. This is a three day training. It's, it's guaranteed, so no matter how many people subscribe to this training, the training will still go on. When and where? Well, please button is not yet there. Can I have it? Can I have it? No, no. <laughs> that you cannot do yet. Okay. Well, I'm going to select uh, OS. Uh, when is it? Um, this is a teacher. And I've created a new session. Okay. In the general information tab. General information. Yeah, it's published. Set. So, now we've got an extra session. So, there's a pretty complex scheme here. You're not working with articles, you're not working with, with categories, you're not working with, with select sections. It's very easy to maintain. The code about the forum, let me show you that quickly. There's only one forum. This is the subscribe forum. And what we simply do with our forms in the, in the display tab, If I go to a subscription, let's view the, let's view the sessions. Oh, that's the here on the sessions. Training catalog, all trainings, select the session. <coughs> if I click on the subscribe button, you see the link here. Session is 10. So I'm subscribing for session number 10. In the RS Forms code, I'm simply reading the session ID, and then I say the training object is session training, the location object is session location, and I can simply display the data in the form. It's very easy. I, I don't have to learn PHP. I can just simply use NanoScript to call the data inside the forms. Any questions? You good to go? So, you, you've seen on the fly a couple of things. I've shown you the admin previous edition. I'll show you the new admin. Uh, but I'm going to do this while I'm talking about the number new nice week. Did you, did you see the search? Was it the German search? How do you search a content structure that isn't articles and stuff you use in the search plugin? There's a search plugin for one, and it searches the one schemes. Not all of them, of course. Only the ones you say that are searchable. Um, let me just run you through a number of advanced topics. Um, I'm going to rattle these off relatively quickly because we're, we're uh, moving forward with time. Um, just to give you an idea of what's under the water with the iceberg. Uh, if you do a selection at the control level, you do a you end up generating a query. We have a query object in, inside that you can put conditions on and joins and stuff. The first thing you want to do is you want to show all the sessions with the ones in the future. Now, the way to do that is you can define a filter that sits on a menu item that affects the selection. All the ones in the future, only the ones to the current, for the current user. You are the query object capable of saying, I want all the sessions where the name of the speaker begins with an A. So it's a join, so it's a star query, you can do that. Um, 
when you're doing queries about multiple schemes, you can end up, because you're declaring things with fairly complex and low performance queries. If you have a very complex query that you use a lot, you can build a custom model factory. The way it works technically is you ask the one repository for a selection. One repository instantiates the right factory for that scheme and asks it for the selection. So if you build your own factory, you can actually do a very complex SQL query very effectively or store procedure call and return the objects, instantiate them, and overwrite standard behavior and make it much more performance. Um, you can do multi uh, scheme search forms. And I need to show you at least one of the forms here in the back end, which is this is the new one content manager. Speaker. You notice that these are not the same columns as he had in the other side. These are also not the same columns as we use for companies because they have you know, slightly different column definitions. In my speaker admin folder, I have a list view, which is an XML that describes the columns in my backend view. Let me go back to my uh, speakers. Name, picture, company, name, picture, company. Picture is actually a bit of nanoscript, so you can generate very interesting columns in the back end that are totally customized to your scheme. If you look at events, this is really neat, you can show related objects here, list items, many. You can use a checkbox image, you can do all kinds of neat stuff. You can show an address in one little column, not the street, number, zip code, fill up the half of the screen. Um, the same happens for the, deep, for the form. We build forms with widgets and containers with widgets. Containers are ways of grouping widgets. A container could be a layout container like a div or a tab set or a panel. Or it can be, and widgets are anything you want to bind the value to. It could be a drop down, a calendar widget, it could be a multi select group box. Um, now, I'm here in the detail form for the speaker, so I'm going to go back to speakers. Me, myself, and I. A simple drop down. And I know this scheme has a relationship with company. So in my definition, I say I want to select relational. And I want to use this relation to select from. It's a company is the role that relation always show. And I want to show the name attribute of the companies as elements of the list. And that's it. If I do the same for an event, it's a bit more complicated, but it's pretty much the same thing. I use the Joomla HTML, which includes all the extended editor buttons. Thank you. <laughs> so, just to finish this, you've got multiple lists, you've got multi checkbox group, you've got a number of different widgets, and if you need other ones, you have color pickers, you have you know, pop up colors. Put these in tabs and stuff like that. Um, running out of time means I'm going to go to at least one more neat thing. We have permissions, we have an ACL if you want to. You can put permissions on actions. You can only do this if you're an administrator or if it's your own object you're trying to edit. Or you can put them on forms, on widgets and containers, which means you can have certain uh, widgets that you cannot use if you're not a particular type of user, or if it's a Wednesday, or if this is a particular of this, for instance, you cannot add or uh, select, change the company um, if there's already um, events attached to the speaker or something like that. We've got behaviors, and this is really powerful. Talk about the search behavior. We call that behavior something that affects the way the thing reacts to the standard, less than detailed stuff. If you want to make a speaker searchable, what will be the attributes that you make searchable? Name. Name. 
bio. Right? If you want to make a, um, an event searchable, would you make the start date searchable? Probably not. So what you do is you create in the scheme, you give it a behavior.
Um, if somebody has an application which says, gee, you do this with one content, I, I really like him to take some time to talk to Rene because he's, he's not inside the development of one. He just sits on the outside and says, this is the experience I had using this. How easy it is specifically to talk to customers and they're, they understand this. They look at an admin which is full of the things they know. And that's a big plus for a complex uh, content site. And all the complexity, how much code did I show you? And that's the amount of code there is in a big project. Um, so if you're interested in taking a shot at this, or you have like a project that you think this might be something for one, come talk to us and uh, we can share one with you. We see where this goes. I have no real concrete plans, but I'm open to whatever happens. But you see, uh, the first problem is how to explain to people what this is. It is not a CCK. It is not a framework. If somebody has a good definition of what it is, please tell me. So it's all cool. it's cool. it's cool. hmm? it's it's cool. content. It's content. I, I see it as a data modeling tool with a rabbit development environment from me as an integrator. Who has a feeling that they could use this? Good, I'm happy. <laughs> Who has specific plans of who would, who would want to take a shot? Who's tempted right now? Maybe we'll think about this going on and say, well, yeah, no, okay. Because it's complicated. 